Kuroko no Basket is the best what? sports anime of all time. Look at What's these it? Dragon Ball level powers being thrown around. A guy literally has a sharing gun that trips people up in a super pass that reaches mock speed in 0 0.0002 seconds. Can an old show called Slam Dunk even be considered a great basketball anime? It's so old! What do you mean it ends at episode 101? That, okay, that was, that was, this was my experience in a nutshell about three years ago when I caught up to the slam dunk anime and felt depressed because I knew there was more content out there and none of it was animated. At this point, I've never read a manga before. I was still caught up thinking yeah. that people who read manga were exalted beings that resembled the celestial dragons in One Piece, looking down at everyone who wasn't caught up with the manga. And I didn't want to be that guy, but slam dunk left on such an unceremonious point that I was forced to scour the internet to pirate the slam dunk manga and i have not forgotten how much i love the manga to this day reading the final chapters of slam dunk was like being courtside to a real game i was jumping out of my seat i was distraught i was anxious wondering about the outcome of the battle of skill and technique being displayed on the court and i realized the joy the manga readers were talking about and forcefully laid to rest the story that emotionally hurt me because of its ending I love this manga, but I always felt that there was a missed opportunity not animating the entirety of Slam Dunk. So when I heard that a finale of Slam Dunk was coming out in theaters, I was happier than Santa Claus giving out coal, and it's release date on my birthday no less. So my wife and I booked the tickets in advance and went to see the screening of the first Slam Dunk. And just in case you have no idea about Slam Dunk, I'll give a quick summary so you're not entirely lost. Slam Dunk is about a red-haired delinquent named Sakuragi who joined the local basketball team for Shohokoku High School in order to win the heart of his crush, Haruko Akagi, who is both the sister of the captain of the basketball team, Akagi Takenori, and is already madly in love with Rukawa, Kaede, a rising star in the high school basketball scene. Then we have Sakuragi, who knows nothing about basketball and instead is known for being the toughest guy around and has confessed his love to 50 girls and has been rejected 50 times. What makes this story so appealing is this sudden change in motivation from Hanamichi Sakuragi, who begins with shallow dreams of winning the heart of Haruko, now beginning to play for the love of the sport, although Haruko still is a major factor. His achievements are the highlights of the show, and when I said he knows nothing about basketball, he legitimately can't even dribble correctly. So there's this incline from being able to dribble to being able to pass, and finally able to shoot, or more importantly, dunk. Every small understanding of the game of basketball for Sakuragi became a huge achievement for me as a viewer and it felt like I was learning basketball from score one alongside him. Two very important players come on the team later in the story, Hisashi Mitsui and Miyagi Ryota. These five make a group of delinquents that become a perfect storm on the court and slam dunk is their story. First of all, I want to say that I will say a few minor spoilers in the movie, so if you want to go into the movie spotless, then you might want to click off now. Otherwise, hope you like the video and subscribe if you want more content like this. So let me give the bare minimum of what you need to know. The, this movie is about the final game they have in the manga against a very strong team known as Sano. This team coined as the Three Kings because they have three very prominent players on their team that are known to dominate in a game. I cannot tell you how opposite they are in character in comparison to Shohoku. Sano not only having a pedigree of winning championships consistently, but this team is known for being the strongest in the lineage of this school, <laughs> even beating out last year's champions who are already playing college level basketball in a mock game. They are also known for never looking down on their opponents consistently studying for their next game in order to win with certainty. Shohoku is more of the rough edge bad boys with no prestige to their name. It's part of what makes this game so exciting because Shohoku wants to be the bad guys. They want to take away the championship from Sano and rub it in their face. The movie has a great introduction of the Shohoku team being sketched out one at a time, walking towards the audience with this great rock vibe to it and really sets the mood for the entire movie. Now, the major thing I noticed that was different about the movie was the change in perspective from Sakuragi to Miyagi Ryota. In the story of Slam Dunk, we normally would be following Shohoku in the eyes of Sakuragi and his story to prove his quote-unquote genius, 
Which is why I didn't understand when I saw a young Miyagi Ryota playing with his older brother in a game of basketball in the beginning of the movie. Like, oh, everyone's gonna get a backstory in the movie, cool, is what I thought in the beginning, and I gave up on the idea when I realized we always return to that same period in Ryota's life after cutting back into the battle with Sano. I didn't understand that direction in the beginning because I felt since I've been following Sakuragi as the main lead for so long, to have someone else in the team take that position felt kind of weird weird because all of a sudden Sakuragi became somewhat of a side character and it discombobulated me for a second but I think I actually appreciate the direction it took with Yota. Just as a personal opinion, I think that back in the day Sakuragi was the classic shonen protagonist of the time, powerful, larger than life, and skilled at breaking expectations. However, I think in the current age we live in, and I think we connect more to a flawed character like Ryota more than we would have back in the day. Ryota being a troublemaker, self-conscious of his height and always feeling lesser than his late older brother, he carried that weight on his shoulders and it becomes this narrative that weaves into the basketball game so nicely that I couldn't help but enjoy the different angles Slam Dunk was pursuing. That doesn't mean that the rest of the team doesn't get much screen time in any way though. Every, like Every big moment that happens in the manga is still in the movie and every team member overcomes a challenge in this game. I was also a little bit worried that since this movie was going to be all in 3D CG that it might turn into a box office disaster, but whoever was on X-Arm was definitely not on the project because everything from the movement to the characters were spectacular. And I started to realize how invested I was in the movie that when I left the theater, I had to remind myself it was all in CG. And I really don't want to spoil anything, but there was this moment. I have never felt in a movie theater where there was complete silence. And for moments, I could hear my heart beat pounding with the ticking from the movie that almost felt like I was going to have a heart attack. It was awesome. It was pretty awesome. I really want to go see the movie again, and I realize that the final slam dunk isn't in theaters in the States yet, but if you get the chance to see this film and you're a fan of slam dunk, then you need to see this movie. It's nothing short of spectacular, and you might find yourself having a newfound respect for certain characters that you might not have had before and i honestly never believed i would see the ending of slam duck animated at all it's one of those shows that are old enough where people would rather leave it behind as something that was good in their past and then focus on newer manga to adapt and i get it like how many people are going to catch up to 101 episodes just to come back to an adaptation that happened in 1993 so to see this moment the ending of the first manga I have ever read, to see the ending of my favorite sports anime become a movie was so well deserved and it was one of the best birthday presents I could have asked for. So to the author, Takehiko Inoue, to the staff, animators, and everyone who has read the manga to the end, thank you for finishing Slam Dunk.